April the 14th, exactly 50 days ago on February the 24th, 2022, Russia attacked Ukraine and started a bloody war in Europe. During this time, the occupiers have bombed Kharkiv, Okhtyrka, Trostyanets, Volnovakha, Chernihiv, Mykolaiv and dozens of other Ukrainian cities. Russians are bombing hospitals and schools, churches and museums. The city of Mariupol is under blockade now and remains one of the hottest spots on the map. 95% of the city has been destroyed. It will take years and billions of dollars to restore all this. For 50 days of full-scale attack of the Russian Federation, they showed that the most important Donbass for Russia is the main part of the most Donbass. Russia wants to destroy it in the first place. The most Lugansk and Donetsk areas. Російські війська руйнують так, ніби хочуть, щоб від них залишилося тільки каміння. І щоб там не залишилося людей взагалі. The towns of Bucha, Borodanka, Hostomel and Irpin, liberated from the occupiers, have become synonyms of the genocide of the Ukrainian people. Russists kill and torture innocent people, rape women and children and rope local homes. About 4 million Ukrainians have been forced to flee abroad in search of safety. More than 7 million became internally displaced persons. According to UN estimates, 107 countries will experience food, energy or financial crisis because of the war in Ukraine. We need to silence the guns and accelerate negotiations towards peace now for the people of Ukraine, for the people of the region and for the people of the world. On April the 14th, Kharkiv was attacked by the occupiers again. The enemy fired at least 34 times on residential areas of the city. Из реактивних систем залпового вогню град, крім того, обстріли через артилерію і з мінометів. The Russian military also fired from helicopters at Zolochev and settlements near the Russian border. According to the head of the Kharkiv Regional Military Administration, Oleg Sinehubov, one person was killed and eight were injured. And the occupiers shelled the border settlements in the Sumy region with 120 mm mortars damaging houses. Russians also fired on at least least 15 settlements in the Donetsk region. 11 people were injured. Ukrainian authorities do their best to evacuate as many civilians as possible and warn that this zone may become a territory of escalation of hostilities in the coming days. Russians continue to commit genocide against Ukrainian children. This was announced by the Verkhovna Rada Commissioner of Human Rights Lyudmila Denisova. The authorities of the aggressor country plan to force the deported children from Donetsk and Luhansk regions to learn Russian. The authorities of the occupying country plan to destroy the essence and language of young Ukrainians, erase their memory and all ties with Ukraine. It is now known that about 150,000 young Ukrainians have been illegally deported to Russia. Moreover, in one of the temporarily occupied settlements of Donetsk region, the Russian military men are forcing teachers to go to work. Fearing death, they refuse to create a picture for the propaganda media. They say we will not take part in this circus. In addition, the occupiers have completely destroyed 120 schools in the Donetsk region. 30 Ukrainians have been released from Russian captivity. There are two pilots among them, Ivan Pepelashko and Oleksiy Chizh. According to them, in the Russian pre-trial detention center, severely wounded Ukrainian prisoners are not provided with proper medical care and are forced to record propaganda videos. If Ukrainians refused, the occupiers threatened that they would stop bandaging the wounds of their mates. They said, that they would cut off the infected parts. They said our families were in danger. The soldiers were taken hostage in March in the Chernihiv region and they spent more than a month with the occupiers. Grandfather and the baby, whose video has flown around the world, are safe now. 84-year-old Valentin Platov bravely drove 1,000 kilometers in two days to save his family. And he tenderly guarded the sleep of his six-month-old granddaughter when the car stopped.
Enemy tanks entered their native village near Zaporizhia in the first days of the war. The house where the younger generation lived was bombed. Enemies were shelling from everything they had. The village was left without electricity and gas. The man's daughter-in-law almost died of fever. When they had an opportunity to leave the village, the man took his son, his daughter-in-law, and three grandchildren to Ivano-Frankivsk in the west of Ukraine. The family has started life from scratch there.